Good morning, good morning, good morning, folks. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I am your host, Tiffany Daniels. It is always at stupid o'clock, folks. We're going back to that horrible world known as the JRC. But before we get going this morning, a few of the usual disclaimers. <clears throat> also, Merry Stupid O'Clock. All right, so you are going to see the link to this next DPPC confirm incident of abuse at the JRC right there in the description box, alongside the other pertinent links to the Stop the Shocks campaign, including Autistic Hoya's massive archive on the subject. We also include the templates, folks. Sign your name, click on your senator. It takes less than two minutes. Again, we are trying to end all adversive punishments for existing while being disabled, seclusion, and improper restraints in all schools everywhere because, folks, it kills people every year. All right? Okay. Also, we have the ever-present and self-explanatory change.org Shut the Judge Rotenberg Center Down petition. Now, folks, when we talk about the JRC, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch surveillance footage of people with disabilities being tortured and abused. If you have young children present, please use your headphones, all right? Now, it is Sunday, so I got to get up an hour later. So you're getting this video an hour later. Am I awake? No, it's still 4.04 a.m. stupid o'clock in the morning. So... If I stumble over any of my words, stare off in the space, or let flow from my mouth a stream of curse words, I am not yet had my second dose of caffeine, so my apologies in advance, all right? Okay, so this is an incident that took place. Let's see here. Let me get the date. Sorry, I'm not completely wide awake. Okay, this was an incident that happened September the 7th, 2016. So we're having several incidents in a single year, folks. Harmless my ass. All right, so the alleged victim, ALV, is a disabled person as defined by MGI Chapter 19C and or 118 CMR. So obviously they are. And they block out what their primary disability is. The alleged abuser, ALAB, meet the definition of a caretaker as defined by MGI 19C or 118 CMR. So ALAB is a supervisory staff at JRC. He was working in ALV's residence and was her assigned one-on-one at the time of the incident. Oh, so now we're getting into supervisors and abuse. Well, spill that tea, DPPC. Spill that tea. All right. Category of abuse of abuse committed by alleged abuser act. First, lacera- physical injury, laceration, bleeding. But... <laughs> And of course, because they don't think we disabled have, you know, feelings, because we're not human, right? Odd. Emotional injuries, none. Second, none. Abuse, per se, none. Wow, you all are evil bastards. Okay. Moving on from the obvious. Description of the act and or omission of the alleged abuser that caused injuries sustained by the alleged victim. I, too, reported hearing ALV tell ALAB to not step on ALV's feet and seeing ALV move her feet as to avoid ALAB's feet. I, too, then witnessed ALV's attempt to strike ALAB, with ALAB grabbing hold of her hands in response. I, too, saw ALAB push ALV's hands into her own face, causing a cut to her lower lip. ALV described the same story and was seen with a cut to her lip after this incident. Oh, so we're going to victim mime. 
Why am I not surprised? You know, DJRC seems really fond of whenever a victim of their so-called school strikes out, of just saying that it has something to do with their disability, they're crazy, and that's why they're locked up here in our hell hall, right? What they never seem to do is, you know, tell you why were they striking out. Nobody just simply strikes out without a reason, folks. Not even an autistic meltdown. I can vouch for that as a fact. So, yeah. We're going to have to take this one with a grain of salt, folks. Okay, so ALAB denied doing this. Rather, he said that he had grabbed ALB's hands to prevent being hit, but that then her hands had slipped out of his grasp and she hit her own face. Oh, God, here comes the stupid. After this incident, a, sorry. After this interaction, ALV continued to aggress towards ALAB. ALAB placed ALV in one person hold and others assisted in a brief floor restraint of ALV. None of these reporting staff reported seeing that initial incident. Does anybody else would does anybody else who watches these videos would you feel indicated if they just hauled off and punched one of these evil bastards right in the face? I I would feel some satisfaction. Maybe I'm a horrible person. I got a real nasty vindictive streak. But just saying. Video footage shown that only I too had a clear view of the initial interaction. And I too was adamant that the movement towards ALV's face was done by LAB and that it was intentional. I too stated ALV was calm prior to LAB coming close to her and interacting with her in the way that he did. Okay, so you have another staff person saying that person's full of shit. That supervisor is talking garbage. They started it. ALV, they was just trying to finish it. That's what it sounds like to me. ALV was seen to have a small cut on her lower lip after the incident which she and I too clearly stated was due to the actions of ALAB. Given witness testimony and evidence, it is more likely than not that ALAB's action caused the injury to ALV's lip. Okay, facts pertinent to the allegation investigated. Oh God, here we go. <clears throat> the incident occurred at the ALV's residence. Video footage of the incident was viewed on September the 12th, 2016, when scheduled interview with ALV was to take place. Further interviews were scheduled, including for ALV, on September the 15th, 2016. ALV was unable to attend the main campus for school either day due to her own unsafe behaviors, according to I-6 and I-7 who agreed to inform when it would be safe for ALV to be interviewed at her residence. See, I don't trust these fuckers. Unsafe behaviors. Hmm. That can be one of two things. Either, you know, she refused to comply and you know they shocked her because, you know, God forbid they tell their story without those fuckers with their remote controls only about two to three feet back, right? Right. I'd really be interested in what ALV would have to say without those fuckers in the room, without the threat of being shocked or shocked and punished later for whatever they said. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you be very, very interested? I-6 and I-7 cautioned that ALV has a tendency to make allegations against staff who are following her behavioral program closely. 
Oh, for fuck's sake. There's no reason for her to be so aggressive. We're following her court-ordered behavioral program. Your behavioral program tortures people, Karen. It tortures them. It starves them to death. It traumatizes them beyond all humanity. And then you fucking wonder when they make allegations of abuse because it's abuse. If you have a coherent, logical mind that has not been warped by this psychotic place, it's abuse, Karen. God. I-7 stated that ALP is difficult to manage in restraints, that the ALP has been injured several at times in the past due to her own struggle. Yeah, you mean because she's trying to get away from you maniacs? I-6 agreed, but noted that in this situation, the total interaction between ALV and ALAB could not be seen on the video footage as the camera angle is behind ALAB's body and blocks the view of ALV and ALAB's initial contact and the contact made with ALV's face. Okay, I'm seeing a pattern here. <clears throat> it seems in every single one of these reports, the staff will turn just so, so that the camera cannot get all the footage. Anyone else find this suspect? You see it in every single report we've gone over so far. And it looks like the DPPC, well, they're blaming the victim too, because, you know, they're, they're just trying to find... Follow the behavioral program. Your behavioral program is insane and would not be used on a damn pedophile. Okay? Okay, Karen. We good? Okay. ALV was interviewed and seen at the residence on September the 21st, 2016. <clears throat> she initially refused, but then spoke to the investigator briefly. She stated that ALAB had stepped on her foot as he had done to another student on September 7th, 2016. ALV said that she spoke back to ALAB and put her hands up. ALV said that ALAB grabbed her hands and punched them to her face, causing her lip to be injured. ALV said that ALAB said that she hit herself, but that was not what happened, and I too saw the whole thing. ALV said I too was the only real witness footage and testimony supports this. ALV said the restraint that followed ALAB also had his knee on her chest, but she noted that there was no injury from this and that he was replaced right away by another staff. When asked what she wanted to happen, ALV said she just wanted ALAB not to work closely with her again. I too said that she heard ALV said to ALB, don't step on me. I'm not blank. Referring to another student when ALV said ALAB had stepped on earlier. I too did not see this happen to the other student. She only heard ALV said that it did. I too said that she saw ALV avoid ALAB's moving feet while saying this. Footage supports that ALV and ALAB's feet are close together and moving. In what followed, I too said that ALV reached for ALAB first, but when he grabbed her hands, pushed him forward towards her face, and causing her to strike her own face. I too was adamant that the movement towards ALAB's face was done by ALAB and that it was intentional. I too said that following this, ALV went after ALAB attempting to strike him, and that he put her into a one-person hold until further staff arrived to assist with restraint. I too stated that ALV began yelling for I-3 and stating that ALAB was violating her. ALAB was replaced with in the restraint and ALV calmed. Yeah, I, they violate her on a daily basis. Removing autonomy, starving her to death, shocking her. Who knows if she's also like Jennifer Masemba put on a four straight report uh, board naked while male monitor staff watches while she's forcibly bathed. It's a possibility. It's a possibility, folks. I-3 and I-4 and I-5 all reported after uh, arriving after the initial incident had occurred 
and seeing a crisis in progress with ALAB restraining ALV and ALV clearly attempting to aggress toward him. I too stated that ALV was calm prior to ALAB coming close to her and interacting with her in this way that he did. ALV was seen to have a small cut on her lower left lip after the incident, which she and I too clearly state was due to the actions of ALAB. ALAB denied doing what was alleged. He stated that he approached ALV. She said, you're not going to step on me. And ALV slapped him saying, what is your comeback? Victim blaming, are we? That's not what the footage shows. That's not what your staff member says. Then she grabbed his hands and gr he grabbed hers. But she was twisted and slipped out of the grasp and hit herself in the face. ALAB stated that when ALAB swung at him, he put her in one person hold. ALAB reported he was upset that another staff would say that he had done this intentionally. ALAB said that if he had actually punched ALV, she would have more than a cup on her lip, as he has rough hands. What kind of fucked up statement is that? Oh, you would know if I hit you. Well, because that doesn't sound like an abuser, does it? Video footage does not offer a clear view of what happened, as the camera is behind ALAB's back and blocks view of ALV's face. The only person in the footage who appears to have a clear view is I2, who is adamant about what she saw. Also reviewing the footage, ALAB's arm does appear to have moved towards ALV prior to her crying out when contact with her face is made. Footage also does show movement of ALV and ALAB's feet, when ALV and I2 say that ALV was asking ALB not to step on her feet. Footage of the restraint does not clearly show ALB's knee on ALV's chest. However, there are times in the initial commotion when her chest and his knee are not fully visible. After I3 reported believing ALB's version of events, he stated that ALAB was moved to another residence that evening after the incident. I3 confirmed, however, that he did not witness the incident and that it appeared I2 had. I3 stated reason for believing ALIB was that ALV was wiry and ALV has a tendency to blame others for her situation. Oh, for fuck's sake, you mean that she blames you for torturing her? And that she feels a need and a want to fucking wreck your shit? Because, yeah, I'd feel the same way. Any human would. I-4 and I-5 reported assisting in the subsequent restraint, along with I-3 and I-4 and I-5 reported they were assisting other residents and did not see the original incident between ALV and ALAB. I-4 stated that the only staff person who might have seen this incident was I-2. No one interviewed reported any history between ALAB and I-2, or any reason why I2 would report anything other than what she had seen. All staff confirmed ALV's lip was cut and swollen after the incident. Okay. More likely than not, ALB's action caused injury to ALV's lip. Alright. So, that's all we're going to cover on this particular incident this morning, but it seems very, very clear to me that there's a whole lot of victim blame in this particular report, which is disturbing. This is coming from a group that is supposed to protect disabled people. But when they come forth and report abuse such as this, and they even have one of the staff back them up, that they are still victim blamed by saying, well, they, she becomes aggressive and all of this. And all we're trying to do is follow her behavioral program. And it's not abusive. Let's see here. What do you do with that behavioral program? You shock her basically for breathing in the wrong way. You 
forcibly restrain her for breathing in the wrong way. Oh, let's not forget to include starvation and sleep deprivation. But you wonder why they act aggressive towards staff, especially when it looks like they're getting ready to be restrained and shocked. You're surprised when they fight back. Anybody else noticing this? Also interesting to note, in every single report by the DPPC we've seen so far, every single staff that is engaging in abusive action towards these students always turn their backs and angle themselves a certain way towards the camera, so there's not a clear view of what exactly they're doing to the student. You notice that? Are you noticing the DPPC and the police are like ignoring that particular large elephant in the room. Why is this not suspicious? Why are any of these confirmed incidents of abuse recent enough for a full-scale investigation to be done on this school? And why, in the name of God, with the independent, unbiased investigations and what they have found is this school not closed down. And on those notes, folks, I'm going to go ahead and close out for this morning. We don't get very many views on this channel, especially on this subject. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So, folks, please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the comments and please feed that algorithm. I do appreciate your time this morning. As always, we here at Spilling Tea hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.